In this video, not only am I gonna be showing you guys how to increase your eBay shoe sales by 100%, but I'm also gonna be re revealing my secret weapon. So stick around, guys. You definitely don't wanna miss this one. Welcome back, guys. My name is Phil, the King of Thrift. In this video today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to increase your eBay shoe sales by up to 100% and even more, guys. But before we do, make sure you subscribe if you have not already to this channel right now if you wanna learn how you can work from home and be your own boss buying and reselling on eBay, as well as how to buy and resell shoes. This channel is devoted to helping you guys crush it on eBay, and I have all sorts of tips and tricks, tons of videos and resources on how to basically everything related to eBay. Now with that out of the way guys, let's get right into the topic today. So what we have here are a pair of sea turtle skin boots or alligator skin. Uh, in, in any event, they are um, exotic skins and what we're gonna do is clean them and you're just gonna, as you can see here, we're just gonna take a washcloth or a rag and some water. You wanna make sure to sort of clean in uh, circular motions, then up and down to make sure that you're getting in all the creases. Now, as you can see, the rag is folded um, and that's to give it a little thickness and so that it can penetrate into the creases and crevices of the leather. And again, we're gonna do the same thing, circular motions, being sure around the ankle area to get in there good in those wrinkles and crinkles all around the backs of the shafts. Uh, you wanna make sure that you get in that piping of the boot because that piping is, is hard to get into. So what we're gonna do here is another pair. Uh, these are ostrich skin cowboy boots and you can see they are stuffed with newspaper so that everything is pressed out and ready to clean. Fold the rag just like that uh, once and then once again and uh, you're ready to clean. Across the vamp of the foot of the boot, you, you want to work across the toes. In other words, you want to go from side to side. You want to go in the direction of any creases that are in the boots. Because if I'm sort of emphasizing creases because if you don't get into all the creases, whether it be a shoe or a boot, then whenever you go to further condition or polish that shoe or boot, then that dirt in those creases is really going to show up. You also want to make sure that you get in between where the sole and the foot, the leather meet uh, in the crease there. Because if you don't and the shoe is nice otherwise, then that is going to show up and it's going to make the whole shoe look bad or boot in this case. We're just cleaning on circular patterns again, you know, going up and down, basically in all directions when cleaning to make sure that you're getting in every crease and crevice. Now what we have here is a pair of oiled leather boots by I believe Justin they are I think they're steel toe again it's just gonna be a nice wet washcloth the washcloth is pretty saturated and you will need your washcloth pretty saturated anytime you clean oiled leather and these are oiled leather and this is safe to do because oiled leather does act differently again working across the foot working in in the direction of the creases of the boot, same thing with the shaft, getting into that crease that runs along with the shaft there. Just going to finish up cleaning here, and as you can see, I've sort of almost balled the rag, sort of, and I do that sometimes when I can't get enough. Uh, you, you do need cushion. In other words, you don't want, you don't want just the washcloth under your hand, between your hand and the shoe. In other words, you want a few layers of of washcloth. Uh, that's going to be more effective. That's going to help you clean. Like I said, that's going to help you penetrate uh, deeper into the creases and wrinkles, uh, which is very important. And by folding the rag multiple times and sometimes even, even bunching it uh, when necessary, sometimes you need to bunch it in order to press it in and then clean. Uh, so in other words, you'll want to, you know, squash the rag and then, you know, like I'm doing uh, sort of now, uh, and then sort of press it into those uh, deeper creases and crevices. And as you can see, what I've done on these is I've basically given them a once over uh, and, and then now I'm sort of coming back and working, uh, you know, in a more detailed uh, to get into some of those areas that I didn't get in, you know, the first time over. Now, as you are cleaning, guys, I can really cannot emphasize enough the fact that you need to rinse your washcloth often. When it begins to get dirty, make sure that you rinse it clean and then start again. 
Okay, so here we have a pair of Luke Casey's. Uh, I'm sure you guys are familiar with that particular brand. Uh, if you're not, you probably should do a little research because uh, that is definitely uh, a bolo. But as you can see, again, the cleaning process is the same. Circular uh, patterns, you know. I do have the rag folded, uh, as you can see, one time. Um, I could actually, uh, with this particular boot, because it is shiny, as you can see, this is a shiny boot, um, it's much easier to clean. As you can see, I move along much faster, and that's done. You know, that's in real time, guys. Uh, this, this video is playing in real time, so it took much longer, as you can see, to clean the oiled leather than it would something like this. And these particular boots are goat skin. Goat skin is real easy to clean. It has a nice uh, shine, depending on what sort of finish it has on it. Uh, but these particular ones, you know, they have sort of an antiqued look to them, and that's a, that's going to be a black cherry uh, as far as the color. And again, just making sure to get into the creases and crevices and make sure to get that piping. So here we have another pair of exotic skins. These are ostrich quill. What we're going to do is basically, as you can see, these are, uh, you know, pretty dirty. I think I actually wiped them down once. They were even worse than this. Uh, but there's still a lot of dirt in, uh, left in the creases and crevices of these. Um, they have been stuffed well. Um, all the creases are pretty well pressed out. And what we're going to do is just clean them with a wet washcloth with nothing more, just water, guys. Again, starting with the uh, toe and foot of the boot, uh, working across uh, that way to get into all the creases. And as you can see, I'm already working into that crease between the sole and the foot. Back across the foot again. And as you can see, it will take a little work to get into that crease there. So what I'm going to do is sort of bunch, bunching the rag like I said earlier. And then you, I will bunch it and press it in there. Just like that there, pressed in and then, and then you know, back and forth. And as you can see, that gets them as clean as you want to get them. And if, if, it, they're not, if they don't come out clean enough, then you just pass it, you know, do it a few more times. You know, move it to a different spot on the washcloth and press it in there and go back and forth again. Same thing with the next boot. You do want to clean the sole, guys. You know, with the with your washcloth, when you're finished cleaning the boot, go ahead and clean the sole, especially if it needs it, side of the sole all the way around. That gets it ready to be painted or colored by some sort of conditioner or, you know, sole dressing. As you can see with boots here, boots are more difficult than uh, shoes. That's why I figured I would start with these around the ankle area there are lots of creases and crevices to get into that's why it's very important guys that you do stuff your cowboy boots with newspaper that's what i recommend or you can use what i've used uh, quite often and it's basically what they use to stuff pillows and uh, stuffed animals uh, it's just white filling and it works really well it's really soft it's really easy to stuff the boots newspaper is a little more taxing on your hands newspaper is also messy so when using newspaper, uh, you know, just keep that in mind. You, whatever you touch after stuffing a couple pair of boots is going to be covered with black. So because your hands are going to be black at that point uh, with the ink from the newspapers. So just keep that in mind. This, guys, is my secret weapon. This right here is going to make you guys so much money. You guys are going to be thanking me. Just this right here alone is worth the price of admission. This is Neutral Shine by Kiwi. And you guys are about to see why. I make it such a big deal about it because like I said, um, when you use this nine times out of 10, this is what I use for nine out of 10 of my pair of shoes that I get. There are other times when I need more, but like I said, most of the time, this is what I use. And we'll start by just depressing uh, the top in a little bit, take a little bit of the liquid out there. And then I work in, as you can see, in circles, small circular motions, and then, and then you know, followed, uh, following the grain again, all the while, you know, pressing, uh, as you can see, pressing the depressant on top in order to get more liquid onto the boot. As it comes out, guys, you can see that it comes out in little splotches, little white sort of pools or puddles. And as it comes out, you know, you just want to smooth it in. Uh, in other words, you don't want to keep depressing the uh, depressor on top because more liquid is going to continue to flow out. And if that happens, if you have too much liquid, you're going to have a situation, guys. It's going to be hard to deal with. Uh, so you want, you just want enough to keep the applicator wet, uh, but not dripping or pooling. Working in circular motions and then back and forth, being sure to get into the crease between the foot and the sole of the shoe. And that's it, guys. You can see I just do the foot. Sometimes I will do the shaft. Uh, it just depends on, uh, sometimes on my mood or the condition, really, of the particular boots. We're going to let this shine cure uh, for a little while. 
Uh, and it normally takes 10 to 30 minutes for it to actually set. Once it dries, it still looks almost the same as it does when it's wet. So like I said, this stuff is awesome. Uh, it does an amazing job on nine out of 10 pair of shoes that you might have. And the only trick with it is just learning how to apply it, uh, you know, in a smooth manner. Because if, like I said, if it pools and you leave it in, in pools or puddles, little white spots, uh, you're gonna have spots on, uh, they'll look like water spots on the, sh on the leather. So you want to make sure that that doesn't happen, that you're smoothing out every, you know, uh, little pool that's, that's on there. Uh, so like I said, that's gonna come into play as far as how wet the applicator is. And I just work, uh, now you can see there what a difference it makes in the soles, uh, just that touch. And like I said, once it dries, it looks almost the same, guys. So this stuff is awesome. Uh, and I'm, I'm just hitting the entire sole, guys, all the way around. Uh, now, normally you would hit this with edge, edge dressing, but as you can see, these are in, in uh, really good condition already. I just want to give them a good once over and make them look even nicer. Uh, basically, whoever gets these is going to be extremely happy. And this shine does last for a while. It's, uh, it is a good shortcut. Uh, it's, it is no substitute for the real thing or a real shine or polish, but it does an amazing job considering you know how fast it works, guys. This, this is... I mean, this is in real time, guys. You are seeing it go down, and you see you went these, you saw these go from uh, you know what they were to what they are now. Uh, I mean, you know, look how clean. Okay, so those are done. Now we have our exotic skin um, alligator sea boots, sea alligator boots. You do not want to use cure on these. Uh, what you want to use instead would be Saphir Renovateur, Renovator, whatever you want to call it, guys, some sort of French word. But uh, this stuff right here is awesome. Uh, it, it, it works very good for almost any leather. I've yet to find a leather that it really is not good for. And as you can see, it's just a, sort of, it's a cream. It's like a white cream. It's really easy to apply, but you can apply it with uh, any sort of washcloth. For, some, for a pair of boots like this, I use... Uh, a shoe cloth that's especially made you know for shoes and leather so uh, there's enough on the cap here I'm just going to get a little bit there you, uh, just to show you guys you don't need a lot a little bit of this goes a long ways and uh, what we're gonna do is just one sh uh, one of the of the boots here and again put a little on the on the on the towel and work in small circular motions you guys can see what's going on here the difference and this is a conditioner, guys. This is not a shine. So this is something that you would apply to a very expensive pair of shoes or boots like these particular ones. These are vintage alligator skin. They are old. Uh, they could be somewhat brittle. Uh, at this age, they, what they need is the moisture returned back to the leather. And that's what the Renovateur does very well. And as you can see, I'm just, uh, you know, as it... I'm applying as needed basically and you will know because it will most of it will soak into the shoe the uh, Saphir will absorb into the leather of the boot or shoe you just apply it and then you leave it some people they leave it for for days you know two or three days uh, to, to really let it penetrate before doing anything else to the shoe so this is what you would do before you polish or use what I would recommend is shoe cream and which we will be covering in a further video. Just working around to the back, to the heel, and again, I'm just applying this to the skin or the foot of the boot. Small circular motions all the way around, and that's it, guys. Once uh, you know, once you work your way all the way around, uh, you know, just being careful to once the uh, towel becomes saturated, to just sort of move to another little uh, area. Let's see how our Lucases are doing. As you can see, they are completely dry now, but you can see the difference. I mean, from what they were. I mean, look at that, guys. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, and that is the Kiwi Instant Shine. And like I said, that is fast. The difference is night and day, as you can see. What we're gonna do now, guys, is I'm going to show you a side-by-side -side comparison as far as the difference between if you were to just use 
the Sapphire Renovateur versus the Kiwi Instant Shine. And we are going to apply it to these Exotic Skins uh, Ostrich Quill Boots. This does condition the leather of, of any type of leather basically. I mean almost any kind of leather you can use this on and it's not going to damage them in any way. It's going to renovate and rejuvenate the leather uh, giving it back uh, somewhat of its elasticity and uh, you know its, its pliability and its subtlety. Uh, so this is an amazing product. It is a little expensive but it only takes a little bit guys so it's an excellent cleaner and uh, by the way all the, the links to all the cleaners that I use will be in the videos so you guys can just go down into the uh, description section and there will be links to uh, each and every product for you guys uh, save you time from having to research and find them yourselves as you can see these this one has dried it is hazy that is how it dries and what you will have to do then is uh, to go over it with a horsehair brush and as you can see these have dried this one is dry and it is also hazy and ready for the horsehair brush so now we just want to take our horsehair brush and buff these to a nice shine and again I am working across the foot uh, back and forth and as you can see they immediately begin to shine uh, and basically what you want to do when buffing them uh, with the brush is to just work in all directions and that is uh, you just continue to buff them until you achieve the shine uh, that you're looking for or basically uh, you know they will only shine to a certain point and you will recognize when you reach that point because uh, you know basically they won't get any shinier uh, than what they are at a certain point so just buff them until you know like I said until they're nice and shiny and here is the before and after not a huge difference but if you feel these if you could feel these you would definitely feel a huge difference in the uh, feel of the leather okay so now these are ready to be buffed the exotic ostrich quill boots and we're just going to do the exact same thing as we did with the uh, alligator skin and that is just working uh, working down next to the sole between the sole and the foot to get make sure to get in, in that crease because it does crease inward right there guys and you will have to work back and forth in this manner in order to get in that crease uh, and if you don't then it, you're going to see it if you look closely um, and trust me you don't you know uh, it's just a little extra effort as far as working in that uh, back and forth pattern right there to make sure that doesn't happen as you can see I am working back and forth uh, and then in circular motions then up and down basically hitting in all directions and I'm just going to work the boot until I achieve the desired effect and as you can see it is getting shinier right before your eyes and again across the toe as you guys know by now working across the toe always with the grain of the foot uh, and you can see working around the foot in the same direction uh, and then just giving it a final buff and you guys can see the difference there I mean that is uh, I mean that's professional grade right there guys I mean that is how you want to treat a very nice pair of shoes and like I said if you could feel these you would feel the difference in the leather it is it's a big difference guys so what we're going to do now is put some instant shine on the other boot and we will see the difference so that you guys can see uh, you know what's the difference in a side-by-side -side comparison and again just applying in small circles centric circles all the way around make sure making sure to get the toe uh, making sure you guys you want to get good coverage on the toe uh, it's very easy to miss spots on the toe for some reason trust me uh, and then getting down in that crease there and making sure to get in around the piping because the piping of the boot is what runs uh, vertical uh, from the from the uh, sole up the shaft and you want to make sure that you get in that crease where that piping runs and around to the heel small circles and as you guys can see here this takes little of no time and again that is why I love the instant shine so we are just going to put these away while the uh, instant shine dries and then we'll do a little side-by-side -side comparison here momentarily while we do that guys let's move on to the gray ostrich quill boots and uh, see what we can do with these what I'm going to do is just again hit them with instant shine 
uh, starting with the toe, working back and forth across the foot, all the way up, uh, you know, to the edge of the leather, being careful not to overlap onto the shaft. Because if you do, if you get a little bit of this, of this shine on the uh, shaft of the boot, it is going to show. Uh, so either what, in that case, what you want to do is clean it off instantly with a wet uh, washcloth. Uh, because if it dries, it is going to show up where you overlapped and it's going to make the rest of the boot, look, the rest of the shaft look bad. And then you'll, what you'll end up having to do is what I've done many times, is having to do the entire shaft. Uh, in other words, having to instant shine the entire shaft of the boot. Uh, which many of you might, uh, you might want to do that. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, I've done it that way. And what happens is you end up going through a ton of the instant shine, which is not cheap. And uh, it just takes longer and it doesn't really make a difference. It doesn't make a difference as far as money goes. That's what I can say, guys. Okay, so back to the ostrich quill. As you can see, they are done. Uh, we have the one on the right here that was done with instant shine. And the one on the left, which was done with the Saphir Renovateur. And you can see the difference right there, guys. In my personal opinion, the Instant Shine does a little better job as far as shining the shoe because hence the name, Instant Shine. Uh, and these are totally dry, guys, by the way. Um, so this is what you get in the final product. Not a huge difference, but what it comes down to in that particular instance is uh, are you looking to renovate a, a very expensive pair of, of shoes or boots? Uh, you know, and go all out on them, or are you, uh, you know, just looking to get them clean as quickly as possible in the most efficient manner possible in order to move on to the next pair, you know, on to the next, on to the next one. Uh, so that's why I recommend the Instant Shine over the Renovateur, but again, depending on the particular pair of shoes, if you have a really, really high-end pair of shoes, then of course you want to go straight to the Renovateur. Um, and use that followed by a real polish or shoe shine or shoe cream. That's what I would recommend and that's the best way uh, you know to to deal you know with any particular pair of shoes that might come in. Uh, you know it's a case-by-case -case basis guys in other words. So uh, what I say you know for every shoe that comes in you should use the instant shine. No. What I say for every shoe that comes in or boot you want to use the uh, Saphir Renovateur? No, definitely not. At the end of the day, you get, it's a case-by-case -case basis, and what we are going to continue to do in this course is to show you guys, you know, how to tell, you know, what to do depending uh, on the on the particular pair of shoes. In other words, the condition. In other words, the brand. Uh, what type of leather is it? You know, uh, you know how dirty is it? You know these sort of things. Is it worth, you know, this or that for renovating? or does it need to move quickly through? I mean, all these questions are coming into play and we're gonna cover all these things uh, so that you guys will know when, whenever a pair of shoes or boots comes to you, whenever you get them, you're gonna know exactly what to do. You're gonna know exactly what you need to apply, uh, what sort of product needs to be put on it, what sort of steps need to be taken. If this video has helped you out, then make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, what are you waiting for, guys? You need to go ahead and subscribe to this channel right now, especially if you wanna learn how to work from home, be your own boss, buying and reselling on eBay. Thanks for tuning in for another video. I will have that next video in this series entitled How to Increase Your eBay Shoe Sales by 100%. It is coming very soon. It is in the works, guys. And like I said, by the time this course is over, you guys are gonna be experts buying and reselling shoes on eBay. So make sure you be on the lookout. Bolo for that in the future. And until my next video, guys, thanks for watching. You be good.